Hi, Dr. Becky here. Congratulations on getting your functional health blueprint test. I'm gonna do a video now on how to um, obtain the sample and then how to send it off. So uh, you've got your kit here and then you have your gray folder. So we'll start with the folder. So in the folder, you have a few papers. One of them is this requisition. This is where you put in your personal demographics in this section and you'll answer the questions accordingly, your supplements and vitamins here, and then be sure to sign the bottom of it. If you are a female who still has a menstrual cycle, um, you'll notate the difference, um, the information here about your cycle. And then I want you to collect the sample between days 19 and 22 of your cycle if you have a 28 day cycle. If you have less than a 28 day cycle or more than a 28 day cycle, then you would adjust that window of day 19 to 22, day 19 to 22, um, back it up or move it forward. Um, so I would, if that's confusing or you're not quite sure, we didn't cover it before you left with your test, um, then just shoot over a text to the thread where you have your appointment reminders, um, and then I'll help you be able to clarify that. So you'll complete this. This paper, when you're done, will then be folded up and you will ship it with the sample. So this is the one we'll keep aside. Now, also in your folder, you do have instructions that are printed, although I'm gonna go through them with you right now. This top part um, explains what's inside of your kit. And then we have how to collect the blood sample. And then on the back, we have how to collect the saliva sample. This is very well detailed, although I am gonna go through it briefly here. On the bottom, we have some helpful tips for collecting the quantity of blood that's necessary for this test. If you would like the video also done by Max Living, you have a QR code here that does another example of how to collect the test. You also have an example on the left side of the folder with what would be an acceptable blood sample and a poor blood sample. And the lab will reject it and send it back if it doesn't look like this before you send it. So we'll, and then there's additional helpful tips for getting um, the blood to look like that on the card, but I'll review those in a moment, okay? All right, let's open up our kit now. Okay, on this side of the kit, you have your orange cap tubes. These are going to be to collect your saliva. Okay, anyway, there you <laughs> Then you have your lancets for pricking your finger for the blood over here. On the other side, you have an ice pack. You'll wanna go ahead and put that in the freezer when you open your pack. Just leave it in the freezer until you're ready to send it. You have your blood sample collection cards, which are three of those here. You have kind of like a first aid kit for all of the blood that you would get. Um, so you have gauze pads, you have band-aids here, you have alcohol wipes to clean your finger off. You won't need to use all of those, but they are there. And then here you have three packets. These are the packets that you will place your blood card in to ship it. Of course, that's after the blood card has dried for I prefer 24 hours being dried. Then you place this card into the packet and then you one per packet. Inside of the packet is one of those little um, things that protect, like absorb moisture and you leave that, that guy in here. So I'm not gonna open this and show you because you need to keep this sealed until you're ready to put the card into it. And then it's a Ziploc, so you just re-Ziploc it. So those are for shipping the blood samples. On the very bottom, underneath everything, sneaky hide hidden in here, you have a biohazard bag. This is for your saliva samples. And then you have your shipping envelope which is just a basic envelope bag and your shipping label. This just disconnects off of here and you stick it on the front when you're ready to ship it. That's very simple. It's just hidden at the bottom of the, of this, of the kit. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. And if we come over to our blood spot cards, so um, this is a test that needs to be done uh, when you're fasting. 
So I do want you to have fasted for 12 hours, only water. So it's best to do it in the morning. This is gonna be able to give us a great accurate representation of cholesterol, triglycerides, A1C, um, and some inflammatory levels. So we'll do it fasting in the morning, preferably. So you open up the card here, and then you'll get, this always gets stuck, this little guy here. There we go. And then you'll get some lancets out. You may need two. Some people need to do three fingers. Some people just do one finger. That's um, just independent of how your blood is. So in order to, what you're, you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna prick your finger, you pull this off, you put this on the side of your finger is better than the middle. The side, you get a little more blood and you tend to get more blood out of the middle finger or the index finger. Before you prick your finger, it's good to like shake your arm down a couple of times, milk it like you're milking a cow. You gotta get the blood flow going, then you milk the finger. You can already see even my fingers are turning red there and that means you have a good blood flow to the finger. So I like doing that a few times, shaking it down before you would prick it, that you have a better chance of getting all of them done with one prick if you do that, okay? So then once you prick the finger, then you're gonna sit here and you're gonna get real close and you're gonna try to squeeze the droplets of blood and fill up this top square. So we just squeeze, and you're trying not to put your finger directly on the square, but get it real close and try to drip, 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 drip and fill up the square, both squares. And you wanna keep dripping it until you see the blood has gone down to the first line. Then the card, the technology of the card should carry the blood out down through the second to the third line. So I want you to keep dripping it until the blood hits the first line at least or farther than that. And you would do that same procedure for all six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Occasionally, you don't get enough blood to do all six. So you can stop, clean it up, try on another finger or another hand to finish the rest of them, okay? Then you leave these set to dry for 24 hours, open to the air. And of course, on the bottom of here, you fill in your date of birth, your name, and your the date that we collected it. And then we just set them out, out, out on a table or open to the air to dry and put a Band-Aid around your finger. That's how we collect the blood spot. For the saliva tubes, if you come back to your instructions over here, your instructions give you the time frames during which I want you to collect the saliva. So the first one, it's gonna be upon waking. So right when you wake up, preferably within five minutes, immediately when you wake up. So just set this next to your bed. Like as soon as you wake up in the morning, um, you start spitting into the tube. Don't eat, don't brush your teeth, don't use mouthwash. You can drink water, like swish water around in your mouth, but that's the only thing you need to put in your mouth before you collect the sample. And then you just keep spitting in the tube. And I want you to fill up the tube if you can get three quarters of the tube filled with saliva and it's the actual saliva, not the bubbles of the saliva. So you gotta let those go down. You wanna get the actual saliva three quarters full of that. <clears throat> there is a great helpful tip here that I even had to use, which is if you can't produce enough saliva and you're taking like a long time, if you get a fresh lemon and squeeze it a little bit and then inhale, smell the lemon juice, the, the fresh lemon juice, that helps to produce more saliva. So we're gonna fill up that tube right when you wake up. The second tube is gonna be, and the instructions are here, two to th or three to four hours later, same procedure. The next one is three to four hours later. And then the final one is right before you go to bed. Again, with the, don't try to not eat anything within an hour of filling up the tube. And don't collect the first sample. You don't have, don't have brushed your teeth before you collect the first sample. Okay, then each time you're done spitting in it, you can put it in the freezer. So you're just gonna have this little bag here, you put it in the bag and you keep these in the freezer until basically you're ready to send it. I like to write the date and time on here before you put it in the freezer. You write the date, the name, date, and the time you collected it, circle AM or PM, and it's easier to do that before you put it in the freezer because the ink stays on better. And all those tubes, you end up put getting them collected and then that, that goes in the freezer, okay? 
<clears throat> that is how you would collect the samples and you'd be finished at that point with it. Um, the next day after your cards have dried for 24 hours, then you open up their individual packets. You put the blood card in the packet, not with the, um, not with the plastic, just the, the, the card itself in here, seal it, all four of those. Then you would take, when you're, just keep them until you're ready to go to the post office. When you're ready to go to the post office or drop it off, it can be placed in your mailbox, but due to summer coming, I prefer that you drop it off at the post office in like the drop box. This is a pre-prepared label. Where was the label again? Oh, it's in here. This is a pre-paid and pre-prepared label. You do not have to wait in line at the post office for this. You can just drop it in one of the, the, the package drop box walking right inside the post office there. So before you're ready to go, then you would take your bag, take your frozen saliva, your ice pack, which at this point you would put in with the frozen saliva, zip it, take your blood cards, put all of them in this envelope here, and then you would put your requisition form that we filled out. We would fold that up and put that also, you know what, actually, sorry, I skipped a step. I want, I'd rather you put them back in the box like this. You can take all that stuff out of the box, set it back in the box. This keeps it a little bit safer, you know, put it back in the box completely. And then it's easier if you put the whole box into the bag, like that. Then you stick the label on, you seal it here, and then drop it off at the post office. Last but not least, um, you would send us a text, please, or let us know at your next appointment that, hey, I sent my test off so I we can track it and um, we're on top of the lab making sure that the results get back in a timely manner. The results take 14 business days and due to the demand of the test at the lab, it has been taking all 14 business days to get the results back. And as we shared uh, when you purchase it, then I will also take um, another few days to process and interpret the results with my um, functional medicine team. And then we'll sit down, we'll reach out to you. We'll sit down uh, and go through all the results together and um, what if any protocols you may have to start healing and getting to the cause of the problem. So that's it, I'm excited for you. Please text, reach out to us with any questions that you have along the way.